From Classical 96.3 FM, that was the Gloria from Haydn's Theresian Messe, his Teresa Mass. Uh, Neville Mariner directing a great cast, including soprano Carol Vaness um, and the uh, Leipzig Radio Orchestra and Staatskapelle Dresden. Well, that's my way of introduction of my guests right now, because you're going to be hearing this Mass, Haydn's Theresian Messe, at Holy Trinity Church this Saturday, February 9th at 8 p.m. Holy Trinity is that sweet little church right next to mm-hmm. the Eden Center. It's going to be performed by the Larkin Singers, Group of 27 Chamber Orchestra, and some illustrious soloists. And Eric Paitko is here right now. He is the conductor and founder of Group of 27 Chamber Orchestra. And we've also got Jennifer Taverner, who will be singing the soprano solo. So welcome. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. You must be excited about and looking forward to doing this concert. Yes, it's wonderful to have a collaboration with the choir. Yes, I'm really looking forward to working with the Larkin Singers again for uh, the second time. So. You get around, Jennifer. You, 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 you've <laughs> sung with my brother's choir. You've sung with the Larkin singers. Yeah. You've sung with the Laura Festival singers. Yes, you've sung with crazy. Eisler singers. You, yeah, mm. that's great. You've, you've got a, a, a nice, nice burgeoning career there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Eric, tell me about Group of Twenty Seven uh, Chamber Orchestra. Now you're not really well known yet in Toronto. So no, we've been we've been building gradually. It's a very nice way of saying that we've had certain projects here and there. Um, but we are mostly made up of, of Toronto Symphony players, TOC players, oh. um, and freelancers from, from Toronto. And we've been, this is our fifth year in existence. And okay. uh, now we're building more and more and, and having regular concerts. And you you have a background as a resident conductor with Les Violons du Roi, which is pretty nice to have on your it resume. Was, it was a wonderful time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so tell me about the repertoire. Oh, first of all, Noah, let's talk about the title. The concert has the uh, mysterious and enticing title, Testimony and Reason. Yes. What's, uh, translate that. Well, this, that title was um, inspired by one of the works on the program, Michael Oesterle's Unreasonable World. And Michael was inspired by a French, a very famous uh, French 17th century um, mathematician and physicist uh, Blaise Pascal, yeah. who um, struggled a lot between his brilliant scientific mind and his family's deep religious beliefs, and was torn between the two um, a lot. And so, there's also obviously we're doing masses, which are sacred works by Haydn and Schubert, but um, each of those composers also had their own struggles with the religious side of things and how they dealt with that. And so, this whole uh, program deals with those struggles, and we'll have text as well, uh, spoken by two of our members that intersperse uh, between the works to to bring to light a lot of that struggle. Oh, how interesting. You mean like letters, like the writings? Yeah, of the, yeah we'll oh, have cool. quotes and letters and, and ideas from the different uh, the philosophers and, and, and composers themselves. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that that's quite that's that's great. That's very original. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, it's another way to pull the audience in, right? Rather we, than just have them sitting there sort of passively and letting the music wash over them there. It's nice. Nice way did, to draw we them think in. So too. We we yeah. G27 we like to be uh, multimedia. We like to bring in a lot of different elements. Yeah. And, and and like you said, get the audience involved. That's really the way to go these days. I think, I think. so. And and yeah. we love it too. The, the, yeah. The, the members of the orchestra and, and me, myself, the, the conductor. Yeah. So not only are there all these elements that you just mentioned, but there's also art. Yes. By, there's a, there's going to be a literal unveiling as the music starts of a stunning work, uh, very large, five by seven, by the incredibly gifted uh, artist Paula Arseniega, who, is, um, who works here in Toronto. And um, it's, it's called The Passover, and like I said, is very large and will be stunning. So to come to see the unveiling of this work. And it's going to be unveiled right when the concert starts and yes. when you start playing? Like yes, same time? and it will be above oh. all of us. Wow. And so it's it also, the whole idea of wow. her work was inspired by the works that we're performing. She, she painted it for this concert. Now, um, let me get to Jennifer. You're the soloist in both the Haydn, Teresa Mass, and the Schubert Mass in G. So, uh, presumably, between Haydn and Schubert, you need to sing in quite different styles. Well, I don't know if it's all that different. I mean, they're both such beautiful lyrical lines in both masses. Um, 
and I have such an extensive choral background, so I'm really enjoying working on this stuff because I've sung yeah. the, I've sung the Schubert as a chorister, never the Haydn. Um, but what I love about these masses is that there's no I'm the soloist, so now I'm going to step out and sing my aria, and then the chorus is going to do the chorus. It's yeah. all interspersed, and the the quartet writing of the soloist is interweaved, inter interweaves through all the orchestral and the choral writing. So. It's a really a great feeling of ensemble, and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with that. So can you sort of sneak in a little bit of, of, of the, the choral singing to warm up for your solo parts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I've definitely done that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, this sounds like a great concert. Do you think Haydn and Schubert, like, is it, is it like first chorus, second chorus, or are they, are they, do they balance each other, or what made you choose these two particular masses? Well, Matthew Larkin and I were, were discussing this, Matthew. Obviously. Oh, yeah, the Larkin singers, Zena. Yes. We haven't even mentioned them yes, yet. Yes, okay. and Ma Matthew <laughs> is conducting the Haydn. I'll be conducting the Schubert and the Ursule. Okay. And Matthew Matthew will be conducting the the Haydn. And we chose these works because, well, for one reason is is how close they are together. Um, I, this is one of Haydn's later masses, and this is one of Schubert's early masses. Mm -hmm. So they're only within ah, okay. a few decades of each other, uh, 15, 20 years. And so, the the similarities of Haydn's uh, very uh, um, advanced instrumental writing and how he interweaves that, like Jennifer saying, with the soloist, Schubert takes that and gets very innovative in his young years. He wrote it when he was 18, Schubert. Um, and and there's still more of that innovation that comes wow. throughout the whole work. So it's a very logical step from the Haydn to the Schubert. This sounds like a concert not to be missed. And the good news is there are still tickets available. Yes. And you can get them at groupof27.com or you can also get them at the door at Holy Trinity. And the concert is this Saturday, February 9th at 8 p.m. And Holy Trinity is the church right next to the Eaton Centre. 10 Trinity Square is the official address. There's room for about, what you said, 450 people if it's really packed. Exactly. So get your tickets sooner rather than later. Um, and my guests have been Eric Paitko and Jennifer Taverner. Thank you so much for joining me and see you at the concert. Thank Thanks, you. Alexa. And here's just a little sample of the Schubert now. This is the Agnes Day from Schubert's Mass in G.